6B, it is the law. And through this proceeding, I hope to get input from stakeholders about how to best work within the law to maximize consumer protection and education efforts. We have several staff members present in the event there are questions in the opening round. With us are uh, Austin Schlick, General Counsel, Melissa Hampshire, Assistant General Counsel, Amy Colvin, Attorney, Alberta Mills, CPS Secretary, and Jason Levine, Executive Director. We'll begin with questions for the staff, if there are any. Each commissioner will have five minutes for questions. After the questions are complete, I will then excuse staff and move to consideration of the draft supplemental notice of proposed rulemaking to update six, uh, 16 CFR part 1101. Again, I remind everyone that it's perfectly appropriate to voice your personal opinions on legal issues. It's not appropriate to discuss in public uh, session any legal advice given to us by the Office of General Counsel. Legal advice must remain confidential. So at this point in time, I'm going to turn to see if there are questions for the staff. I don't have any questions. Um, Commissioner Feldman. I don't have any questions. I'd love to thank our general counsel and Ms. Colvin for uh, the work and the presentations leading up to this. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Trumka. I, I have none. And Commissioner Boyle. I don't have any questions either. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Having heard no questions, staff is excused to move to listening mode and we will begin consideration of the package that's before us. Uh, before putting the matter as proposed by staff to a vote, I will no now entertain any motions from commissioners to amend the proposal. I myself don't have any amendments um, going in order of seniority. Commissioner Feldman, do you have any amendments? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, today, I, I am offering an amendment uh, that, uh, that that would add two additional questions for, for public comment. Uh, should we move to the amendment before I begin discussion? So I would ask you to describe your amendment for up to three minutes, and then at the conclusion, I'll ask for a second, and then um, go to rounds of questioning from the, the members. So recognize you if you can describe it for three minutes. Happy to do so. So pu public input is a critical part of our decision making process. And traditionally, it's been the practice of the commission uh, to allow uh, commissioners to offer individual questions for uh, comment so that we can create a robust uh, record on, on which to proceed. Specifically, uh, I'm seeking public comment on how the commission should evaluate sources, the sources of information uh, that it would make available under the proposed rule. Uh, we have an obligation to uh, uh, ensure that the information that we're sharing is accurate and not misleading. At the same time, uh, the proposed rule could put the commission in a position of making determinations about the credibility, reliability, and integrity of uh, individual outlets or stories or authors. Uh, so I'm, I'm seeking comment on the best practices to do that. Uh, the proposed uh, rule, the, the SNPR that's in front of us today, would, would also allow the commission uh, some additional flexibility uh, to publish information from saferproducts.gov. Uh, I'm seeking under this amendment uh, public comment on whether we could go even further uh, by releasing this information periodically, for example, on a weekly or monthly basis. I'm curious whether uh, periodic or, or routine sharing of saferproducts.gov uh, information could be a more neutral uh, way to disseminate this information and at the same time provide the commission an opportunity to be even more transparent with the American public about the data that we've collected under this website. I'd be happy to answer any uh, questions from my colleagues about the amendment. Uh, and if there are none, uh, I'd, I'd request that uh, the chair proceed to a vote. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, is there a second to the amendment? I will second it. I think uh, and seconded. We'll now consider uh, move to consideration of Commissioner's felt. Feldman's amendment. Um, commissioners will ask any questions or make comments with respect to each amendment, and then we can come back to you, Commissioner Feldman, at the end for our final comments. Each commissioner will have five minutes per round, and we can have multiple rounds if necessary. So uh, let me start and say, you know, I want to thank my colleague, Commissioner Feldman, for engaging on this item. Um, the supplemental notice is an opportunity to hear from stakeholders on any and all issues related to the proposed rule. And as such, I'm generally supportive of efforts to tee up issues for comment. Um, I appreciate you working with me on your amendment to oppose them in an open manner, and I look forward to reviewing the responses that we receive. Um, Commissioner Trump, did you have questions or comments? I don't. Thank you. Commissioner Boyle, did you have questions or comments? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I don't have any questions, but I will say 
that uh, I definitely appreciate uh, Commissioner Feldman's effort to prompt uh, comments on the few specific issues. Um, but in general, I do prefer to keep the broadest scope possible for the issues that we consider. I'm looking forward to receiving robust and comprehensive comments on all the issues before us. And I am concerned that adding these specific questions will unintentionally limit the comments we receive on all the issues before us. And so, uh, as I say, I appreciate the effort and I know uh, Commissioner Feldman has um, uh, set forth the issues he's concerned about and I expect uh, commenters will uh, comment on those issues and I look forward to those and all the other comments that we receive and but for those reasons I, I don't want to unintentionally limit uh, the breadth of the comments we might receive and so I'll uh, have to oppose the amendment. Thank you. Thank you Commissioner. Commissioner Feldman did you have any final thoughts? I don't. Uh, having heard no further questions or comments um, on Commissioner Feldman's amendments we'll move to a vote on the amendments. Uh, Commissioner Feldman how do you vote? I vote yes. Commissioner Trumka, how do you vote? No. Commissioner Boyle, how do you vote? I vote no. And I vote yes. So the yeses are two, the noes are two. The amendment for Commissioner Feldman is not adopted. Um, Mr. Feldman, did you have any other amendments? I don't, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Trumka, do you have any amendments? I do not. Thank you. Commissioner Boyle, do you have any amendments? No, I don't. Thanks. Hearing no additional amendments, I move to approve the staff's draft supplemental notice of proposed rulemaking and to correct publication the same in the Federal Register. Is there a second? I second. Thank you. Um, we have a second. We can move to a vote. Commissioner Feldman, how do you vote? I vote yes. Commissioner Trumka, how do you vote? I vote no. Commissioner Boyle, how do you vote? I vote yes. And I vote yes as well. So the yeses are three and the noes are one. The motion to approve the staff's draft supplemental notice of proposed rulemaking to update uh, 16 CFR part 1101 passes. Um, the notice of proposed rulemaking has been approved and shall be published in the Federal Register. At this point in time, we're gonna move to uh, 10 minutes per commissioner for any closing remarks. Uh, I'm going to start myself with just a few comments. I think today the CPSC has taken a big step towards improving our rules, implementing Section 6B, and this is long overdue. We really should put consumers first in all the work we do, including alerting the public to hazardous products so that consumers can make informed decisions. Through this process, I hope to align our rules with the statutory limitations of the CPSC and update our rules to be consistent with the current practices in the world we are now living in. I strongly urge the public to comment on this proposal. I want to thank my fellow commissioners for the support and I look forward to reviewing everyone's comments that we receive um, by taking reasonable steps to prioritize the safety interests of American people over protecting corporations. The commission is satisfying its mandate to protect the public against unreasonable risks of death and injury caused by dangerous products. Uh, with that, I'm going to turn to my fellow commissioners, Commissioner Feldman. Do you have a statement? I do, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. And, and I want to, uh, again, offer my thanks to agency staff and in particular, our office of general counsel for all the work that went into uh, today's decisional. Uh, despite the narrative that uh, section 6 B of our statute is a quote unquote gag order. It, it just isn't. Uh, I do believe that this section and our regulations governing public disclosure of agency information have been misinterpreted and misapplied over the year. Section 6B allows CPSC to share information with American consumers in a manner that's fair and accurate and timely. Uh, it's not a gag order, nor does it require CPSC to receive permission from a company uh, before sharing critical safety information. In fact, CPSC routinely shares information over a company's objections. These are called unilaterals uh, and the commission frequently issues them. Mr. Chairman, I have two articles that uh, I'd, I'd like to share with my colleagues. The, the first is by uh, a gentleman named Matthew Cohen, uh, an attorney, uh, who notes that the commission has been recently incredibly active in publishing unilateral press releases. Since May of 2022, uh, the commission's issued at least seven of these unilaterals. I'd also like to read from an op-ed uh, from our former assistant general counsel and uh, the former head of our office of compliance 
Alan Schoen. Mr. Schoen writes that 6B isn't a gag order and that CPSC has all the necessary tools to overcome concerns about 6B's limits on the release of public information to address a product that presents a risk of, uh, 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 to the public of, of, of health and safety. He writes that it's, in it's, it's, quote, disingenuous on the part of the critics of Section 6B to claim that 6B prevents the commission from acting quickly to warn the public about a product hazard. Mr. Chairman, I, I'd like to request consent that, uh, that we enter these two articles into the record. Uh, today, we're considering additional flexibility under our statute to share even more with American consumers. Our, our public information uh, sharing must provide consumers with timely, actionable information uh, about safety. And at the same time, uh, our processes must ensure accuracy and fairness uh, to preserve credibility and, and protect safety. So it's my hope that a final rule here strikes the appropriate balance between these two objectives. And while I do have some concerns about the rule as proposed, I'm voting today to publish the SNPR so we can receive public comment and create a record that's going to inform our next steps. Mr. Chairman, colleagues, thank you very much. I have no further comments. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Commissioner Trumka, do you have a statement? Thank you. Um, we work for the American consumer. When we know about a dangerous product, we should be able to warn them. I think every American deserves that. They deserve the opportunity to protect themselves and to keep their families safe. Congress put up a giant hurdle to transparency when they saddled us with the gag rule. It was anti-consumer and it was wrong. But this agency also willingly raised the hurdle even higher for itself. Starting in 1983, when it passed a regulation tacking on additional burdens that impeded us from informing consumers, things well, and well above and beyond the gag. Because I believe that consumers should be armed with information so they can protect themselves, I view our duty as very clear. We need to strip away all burdens to information sharing that are not clearly imposed by law. That's what I expected this SNPR to do, and I'm disappointed that it doesn't. I voted no because I don't support the direction this proposal takes. It fails to advance consumer protection and it fails to improve our ability to communicate important safety information to the public as rapidly and completely as the statute allows. It doesn't live up to the pro-consumer and pro-transparency approach that I think it needs to. Almost a decade ago in 2014, this agency published an NPR that while very modest, was good on just one thing. It had clear language allowing the commission to comment on information that was already public. And let's be clear, the gag rule applies to disclosures. And information that's already public cannot, by definition, be a disclosure. Now the agency walks backwards from the decade-old NPR. Today's proposed SNPR adds ambiguous language that could impose new constraints on our ability to characterize accurate and already public information. The proposal would open new doors for outside interests to try to censor our speech and hide safety information from consumers. I find that wholly unacceptable. This proposal also fails to provide meaningful examples of how we could use our full authority to quickly warn the public of danger when sending notification to a manufacturer and waiting around for comment is not practicable. Our statute anticipates that we will warn the public immediately when risks are serious enough and imminent enough, connecting public health and safety to the concept of practicability. But our 1983 regulations narrow that exclusion and this proposal leaves the old system largely intact. To protect the public, we must be able to communicate candidly about risks. And while the gag rule places serious constraints on CPSC, the statute itself allows many exclusions. Were we just willing to embrace them? My gravest concern with this SMPR is that it fails to allow a crack of daylight to pass through our biggest statutory exclusion. A unanimous Supreme Court, led by Chief Justice Rehnquist, clarified in 1980 that the purpose of corporate preclearance under the gag rule is to protect manufacturers' reputations from our disclosure of sensitive private information that we gather under our vast statutory information gathering powers. Information that we come across in different ways, for example, information we generate through our own research on products or information that we gather uh, from public sources was never intended to go through the gag rule and the elaborate corporate censorship process. This SNPR would read an entire clause out of the statute. It avoids giving substance to the main exclusion under 6B. Be subject to the statute, the information must be obtained under the information gathering powers of the act or be disclosed to the public in connection with that information specifically obtained under the information gathering powers of the act. On balance, this SNPR missed an opportunity. 
Rather than open critical safety information to the sunlight, this SNPR would draw a new maze through the darkness. I can't think of any practical examples where this proposal would allow us to share new important information with the public or increase the speed at which we share it. It's a maze to nowhere. Here, the role of consumer commenters, though, becomes very important. I expect you to urge us to correct the shortfalls of this SNPR to tell us how we can best get you as much information as the law allows. When you do that, I'm confident that our final rule will take a significantly different approach. And at the final rule stage, we really need to think about how we can get the most information to consumers as quickly as possible. Where the gag rule stops us, so be it. There's no room for us to stop ourselves from doing the right thing. We owe consumers more than that. I hope the commission can reach the consensus with consumer commenters on an approach that protects consumers to the maximum extent allowed under the statute. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Boyle, did you have a statement? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I also want to thank uh, staff uh, from OGC for the work they put into this um, package. Thank you for all of your hard work. Um, with more than a dozen years of service at CPSC under my belt, I can say I'm very familiar with the role that Section 6B plays in the agency's work. And to that end, I certainly can vouch for how hard staff works to meet both the spirit and the letter of the law in terms of not publicly disclosing information protected by statute. And I know that will continue to be the case uh, going forward, regardless of any changes the commission makes to the regulation. As the agency looks to align our rules with the statute's language and purpose, though, I do hope we don't lose sight of the forest for the trees. Our mission is to protect consumers. Providing consumers with the information they need to avoid harm and make informed choices should be the overarching goal, not only for CPSC, but also for those who make and sell consumer products. So it's in that vein that as the commission takes a fresh look at its 6B regulations, I call on industry also to take a fresh look at their responsibility to provide the public timely and actionable information about potentially dangerous products. Section 6 may allow companies to keep certain information confidential, but I am asking them to consider a different question. Should they be disclosing information that can help consumers avoid harm, even if the law allows them not to do so? For me, the answer is, of course, yes. What counts is our common commitment to safety, and surely that should take precedence over parsing the requirements of Section 6B. Meaningful reform beyond what this NPR pro proposes will require statutory changes. But in the meantime, I look forward to receiving comments on the proposal and invite consumers in particular to make your voices heard. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you again to all the commissioners for engaging and thanks to the staff, especially the general counsel's office for the work on this item. And with that, this concludes uh, today's decisional meeting of the Consumer Product Safety Commission.